what's going on guys? This is Tyler and today's video is entitled The INTP Breaking Point, FI Demon. So this is kind of an interesting topic. I think a lot of the jokes that go around with the INTP is they don't really have a lot of feelings. They're more like robots than anything else. And while it is true sometimes, uh, there is some times as well when feelings will really take over the INTP and, um, and make them do some irrational things sometimes that's out of character. And we'll get into this today. Um, when an INTP is, has their back against the wall, they can act very differently than what they normally do. And uh, this is what we'll talk about today. The FI demon and then also the superego, which is brought on by activating FI demon. Alright, so first off here, I just wanted to go over quickly the INTP cognitive functions. Uh, this is just to, if you're kind of a beginner with MBTI, this will kind of give you an idea of what uh, we're dealing with here. Uh, so over here we have our ego functions, and this is where we're normally at. Uh, so we got TI heroes, we're very logical. Uh, we make most of our decisions based on logic. Uh, NE parents, uh, we're more concerned with different paths, different possibilities than we are with uh, you know one true path. More interested in the what if aspect of things. SI child, this is where we like to be very comfy. Uh, this can be a detriment to the INTP because we don't want to get out of our comfort zone sometimes. And I made a separate video on SI child if you want to check that out. And then we have FE and fear, which we'll talk a little bit more about. This is our insecurity. This is what we feel inferior about, uh, the feelings of other people. And it can kind of hurt our feelings sometimes to feel like we're left out of the group or we're not doing too well socially. And we'll talk about that more on a later slide. And this is our unconscious, this is kind of our shadow personality. Uh, maybe when we're not really thinking too much, we can kind of slide into this. Uh, TE nemesis, uh, we have an issue with following through. We have an issue with um, actually putting our thoughts into action, which is what TE is about. Uh, and that can lead us to not finish projects, not get things done. And that's a big problem that can happen with the INTP. Uh, NI critic, I also have a separate video about this, uh, how we criticize our own wants and desires we can really feel like we don't deserve things sometimes and like I said in that video I made about NI Critic you have to reject that because uh, you as an INTP deserve to get what you want out of life. SE Trickster this is our worst function this is where um, SE is about being in your face conquering things being dangerous and this is not really what the INTP is all about we're pretty conflict averse uh, we're not really in your face, um, and we don't really see why that is something you need to have sometimes. And finally, FI Demon, this is what we'll focus on today. Uh, FI is not our worst function, SE is, but um, when you activate FI Demon, it can lead to some pretty bad consequences, and we'll talk about that later. All right, now I just want to go over FI, which is introverted feeling, the cognitive function. Uh, this is something that's kind of opposite to what the INTP normally uses. We base our decisions around logic, not feelings. And we kind of look down on people or look down on something if they make decisions based on feelings. Um, and that is what FI is all about. So like I said, FI takes into account feelings when making decisions. What feels right? Um, what person gives them the right feeling when they're hiring somebody or something like that? Uh, they're not really concerned with what may be the best logical option. Uh, so going back to maybe if you know, an FI dominant is trying to hire somebody, they're going to hire the person that they feel is the best fit. You know, maybe somebody has a lot of experience, they have a lot of uh, good marks on their resume, but they just get a certain feeling about somebody and that's who they're going to end up hiring. Uh, they make decisions based on their feelings. Uh, the word I would use when I think of FI dominance is authentic. You just seem to get this feeling from FI dominance that what you see is what you get. You don't feel like they're really hiding their feelings, hiding their intentions, because that's really hard for them to do, because that's where they're operating is out of their own feelings, and they're not going to go against that. If they have their own moral code, they will not ever go against that. That is the main thing that causes them to do what they do in life. And I know a few FI dominants, and a lot of the decisions they make just don't make any sense to me. INTPs use logic, like I said. But this just comes off as authentic because they're being who they are. Many times people hide their intentions. They hide what they really want from you. 
and I don't know, I just usually don't get this feeling when I'm dealing with, you know, an INFP. You know, INFPs are one of my favorite types. If you're watching this and you're an INFP, you know, I really like you. You're, I understand a lot of the issues that you go through in life because we're very similar. The INTP and INFP share four functions. Um, any parent, SI child, and also NI critic and SE trickster. So when you look at an INTP and an INFP, they're going to look kind of similar. They're going to dress the same. They might behave in the same manner. But when it comes to how they make their decisions, how they live their life, they are very different people. You know, INTPs you know, might be great scientists. We might do great things in the logical world and computer science. Um, and FI DOMs will not be very good at this. They will be better at you know, being a philosopher, being something like a counselor or even a psychologist possibly because they're really going to understand these emotional problems. And these people are you know, very much well liked because they give off this authenticity. They give off this feeling that you're talking to a real person. And let's be honest sometimes, guys, uh, you know, INTPs don't really always come off as authentic. They sometimes act like they're hiding something or they're you know, wanting the person to read between the lines. We may feel ourselves that we're coming off as authentic, but we're really not because FI is you know, not really high on our stack. It's our second worst function. But these FI dominants are you know, really easy to talk to, really get into an emotional conversation with an FI dominant, and they come from a place of understanding, of knowing. And my final point here, you know, FI doms, they can really be prone to depression. They can have this moral code that they set up for themselves and they don't feel like they're always meeting it. And FI dominants can be very judgmental and not, not in a bad way, but they just, they know what the right feelings are. They know how people should act emotionally sometimes. And they're always judging people, but they're coming from a place of, I want to help. I want to help that person feel better with my knowledge of these feelings. INFP, like I said, one of my favorite types, they're very much like the INTP. INTPs are very prone to depression, of feeling down on themselves. Uh, but the INFP is even worse. INFPs can really become depressed, really feel like they're not meeting their own standard that they set out for themselves. If they make a mistake or feel like they have wronged somebody, they're going to really feel bad about that. They're going to really feel guilty about that. And I mean, I used to work with an INFP and we were great friends. You know, I still talk to her all the time. And she would always ask me, she was like, you know, Tyler, am I a bad person because I did X, Y, Z? Am I a bad person if I do this? And I was always like, no, you are not a bad person. You're one of the most authentic people I know. The I've talked a lot about the TISI loop of death that the INTPs have to deal with where they feel like they're not doing anything. They're always staying in their comfort zone, not moving forward in life. And I've heard from you know a few comments I've gotten that the FISI loop of death is also a thing. And this can really get the INFP down. They can feel like they just don't deserve things and they're not getting anywhere in life. But you know, I always try to remind INFPs that you know they're very authentic. People like them. People like talking to them. They're almost like this child in a world full of animals. It's really nice sometimes just to speak to somebody that's very authentic, that you know really understands where you're coming from when it comes to feelings. So just in summary, FI, introverted feeling. This is something you make decisions based on your feelings, how you feel, how a person makes you feel, how a certain situation makes you feel. A totally different line of thinking than logic, TI. But what we're going to talk about when we get into our FI demon mode is that Feelings really start to take over. Feelings start to become the main reason why we make decisions. And this is really not a good spot for the INTP to be in. Uh, but sometimes it's almost a defense mechanism. Sometimes they have to become this super ego to defend themselves, to defend their honor. And we'll talk about this more on later slides. All right, now moving on to today's main topic, and that is FI Demon. This is not a good situation for the INTP to be in when FI demon mode is activated. And we'll uh, talk about that more on this slide. So basically there is two ways you can activate the FI demon. One that's much more common than the other, in my opinion. 
Uh, the first way is uh, none of the other INTP's cognitive functions can figure out how to solve a problem. And I think this is less likely than the other way. The thing about the INTP is, you know, we're very smart, we're very resourceful. If there is a very big problem in our lives, uh, we have the tools to figure it out, mainly through the use of the TI Hero and NE Parent. This is the gift that the INTP possesses, this way to figure out very complex problems. But if the INTP is unable to do that, um, let's say that they're in a bad situation where maybe they can't pay their rent, maybe they're in a lot of debt and they just can't figure a way out. The INTP may start you know, demonizing their job, demonizing their landlord, you know, feeling like this is not right. They're, they feel like maybe they're trying their best, but they just cannot keep up. They cannot figure out a solution, so they start feeling like the situation is evil. They start to feel like this situation is not only bad for them, but bad for the world. And then the second way that you can activate the demon function is uh, someone or something is harming our FE and fear function. And like I said, this is the more likely scenario. So FE, this is our insecurity, the feelings of other people. We can feel like we are socially awkward. We feel like we have a hard time fitting into society. And I have a separate video on FE and fear if you want to check that out. But basically, getting over your inferior function is a big step forward in your life. If you can get to a place where you don't really care what other people think, truly, you start making decisions based on what you really want, not you know maybe what other people want, what maybe other people would feel like is the best decision. That can really you know be a good thing for your life, and that's something that I think mature INTPs really start to appreciate later in life. But anyway, back to the topic. You know, if somebody is really hurting our FE inferior, a couple examples. Someone may be making fun of the INTP in front of people that they respect, so they're making them feel more out of place, more socially awkward, more feeling like they don't fit into the group. Uh, pointing out that the INTP is not fitting in well, or possibly someone is bullying or even threatening the INTP. They feel like their back is against the wall. In these situations, feelings can really take over for the INTP, and they can start feeling like this person or thing is just evil. This thing has to be eliminated. It's bad for everybody. So really, this is when the INTP's feelings really get hurt by somebody and somebody's just really making the INTP feel bad about themselves, the INTP may go into the superego mode and strike back. So like I've been saying, the FI demon will really demonize the person or the thing that is causing this issue, that is causing this pain. They're not only bad for us, but they're also bad for the world, and they might have to be eliminated. So the normally very logical INTP that makes everything, all their decisions, based on logic, based on what the best answer is from my calculations. They will now begin to make decisions based on how they feel about the situation, how they feel about the person. And this is from a negative perspective. This is, you know, coming from a negative situation. So this is not something that is good to be in. This is not good when you are feeling like something is, you know, really keeping you down, really you know, making your life hard. Um, but it's very difficult to push an INTP to this point. INTPs, honestly, are one of the most patient and they can take a lot of pain. And I think there's a lot of reasons for this, you know, mostly due to the SE trickster not being in the moment as much, but there is a limit and, and if the INTP is pushed to their limit, um, they can enter their super ego mode and begin to fight back in a destructive way. So when the FI demon is activated, this can cause the INTP to enter their superego mode. And as an INTP, your superego is an ISFP. So like I said, activating the FI demon can cause the INTP to enter into their superego, and that is the ISFP, also known as the adventurer. So as far as the cognitive function stack for the ISFP, this is what it looks like. You have FI dominant, SE parent, NI child, and TE inferior. And if you noticed on my chart earlier, this is basically the 
unconscious functions flipped. So instead of having FI at the bottom, you now have it at the top. SE instead of being you know, second at the bottom is now in the second position, so on and so forth. So as you can imagine, the INTP and ISFP are very different people. They act very differently. A lot of the decisions that they make come from different thought processes. So, you know, an INTP could look back on a time when they were in this superego and feel like they were a totally different person. They don't understand how they did something, how they handled a situation. And the thing about the superego, you know, it's a very bad place to be. It's when a person is at their absolute worst and they act in a parasitic nature. And this is not only for the INTP. Every single MBTI type has a superego mode that they can enter. And this can be a very bad situation. This can be destructive. This could be very shocking sometimes. So, I mean, as you can also imagine, you do not want to spend a lot of time in this ISFP superego mode. This is going to be a place where you're making bad decisions or you know, at least considering making bad decisions that are going to possibly haunt you for the rest of your life. You know, I would implore you if it's you know, a problem that you're having, continue to use your TI hero and any parent to find out ways out of it. This is when the INTP is at its best, when they're making logical decisions, making decisions based on their own calculations over time. But if the feelings really get hurt, if you really feel put down, you just feel bad about yourself, this can make you begin to make decisions that are destructive and scorched earth. Things will, that will not only hurt the people around you, but yourself too. INTPs may spend years building something up, building something special, and they can burn it all down in one fell swoop. If they're really deep into this superego, the ISFP, they can make decisions that they'll look back on and say, what was I thinking? I feel like I was a totally different person then. What was I doing? So this is you know, a bad situation. This is not good. This is an INTP at their worst. And on this next slide here, we'll talk about the ISFP uh, superego, where what you may do, what you may act like when you're in this situation. So the ISFP superego, I talked about the cognitive functions on the last slide, and we're going to go over those here and kind of explain each one and how it may you know, make you act. FI dominant, we talked a lot about FI, you know, making decisions based on feelings. So decisions made by on the superego will be what the INTP feels is the best solution, not what they think is the best thing. And you are not good at doing this. You are not good at using FI to make decisions. If you find yourself feeling like this or you're even having thoughts that are destructive, you have to get yourself out of that. You have to think of a way to get out of it. Because when you're in ISFP superego mode, these feelings you're going to have are going to be negative feelings. It's going to have a negative connotation to it. You're possibly going to make bad decisions and justify it by saying, well, this is what I feel is the right thing to do. This person or thing has harmed me, and it has to be possibly eliminated if it gets to that point. I have to fight back. I have to quit letting this thing or person run over me. SE parent, this is what the INTP really lacks most of the time, is SE. But when they're in this ISFP superego, this is their parent function. So normally very calm, collected, reserved, cool INTP will begin lashing out with anger and force. They can bang their hands. They could push people. They can possibly become violent. The INTP is normally conflict averse. They don't want to get in your face. They don't want to start a fight. But when they really feel let down like they are in the super ego mode, that all changes. They're in your face. They're ready for conflict. They're ready for that fight. So, you know, I would say, you know, really be careful if you're pushing an INTP too far because if they get into this, it can really be a dangerous situation both for the person and the INTP themselves. NI child, so, you know, the INTP is normally concerned with what if scenarios, not what is. They like the possibilities, the other ideas. But when you're in the ISFP superego, the INTP will have a pretty good idea of the one true path of destruction. So instead of thinking about what they can do, 
They're just going to know what they want to do. They're going to know that they want to throw the punch, know that they want to scream at the person. They're going to be much more sure of themselves when they're in this ISFP superego. They're going to have a better idea of what their one true path is to cause this destruction, to cause this person harm. And many times these decisions can have dire consequences. <clears throat> and finally, TE and fear. This is the last step for the ISFP superego. TE is putting your thoughts into action, doing something. So when it comes to you know being in the superego, this could be throwing the punch. This could be grabbing the knife and thinking about doing something. This could be throwing the book, throwing something at somebody. Like I said, this can be a very volatile situation. You do not want to be dealing with an INTP in super ego mode. Because let's be honest, you're, they're totally different people. These are not normally who you are dealing with. This is a totally different destructive person. But I think a lot of INTPs can kind of recognize this. They can recognize that they felt like this before. They can recognize that maybe they you know, haven't acted on these thoughts sometimes, but like I said, INTPs have very deep thoughts. They've maybe thought about these certain things. INTPs can struggle with fitting in, and they know this. So somebody making the INTP look bad or feel bad, especially in front of people they respect, this can be the response. But I would really implore you today, if you feel like this, if you feel like you are slipping into your superego, Try to get yourself out. Try to figure out the logical way to take care of your problem. Making decisions in the ISFP superego is going to cause terrible consequences. You could do something that changes the rest of your life for the worst. And I know sometimes INTPs just need that defense mechanism to fight back for themselves. So sometimes you have to have this, but like I said, you really want to try to stay out of this. If you have a person or a thing that you feel like is really bringing you down, really causing you trouble, I would try to implore you to figure out a different way to get things done than you know, possibly confronting them, doing something stupid, doing something that will cause you harm. All right, that brings me to my last topic of the day. Did the Joker portray an INTP entering ISFP superego? So the movie The Joker, um, the more recent movie with Joaquin Phoenix, uh, it is a good movie. If you haven't watched it yet, I would recommend uh, watching it. But I watched it, and I watched it one more time after that, and uh, I got to thinking, did the Joker portray an INTP, you know, going down this path of entering his superego? Uh, some reasons why I think he might be an INTP, you know, very unhealthy INTP with mental issues. Um, he had a really hard time connecting with society. He felt like he was on the outside looking in. And this really is a portrayal of F.E. and fear. This is how you know INTPs, especially unhealthy ones, can feel. They can feel like they're on the outside of society and they just cannot fit in. You know, even with his mental issues, it still seemed like he was with it. He seemed kind of like he was a smart guy, but he just could not get his life together. He was trying to become a comedian. He wanted to bring joy to people, uh, but he was terrible at this. And if you've seen my video on uh, INTP's True Purpose, The Sage, I talk a little bit about the ESFJ aspiration that the INTP tries to work towards. INTPs, believe it or not, deep down want to be this person that gives people joy, that people come to for emotional support. And this is what the Joker is trying to do. He's trying to bring joy to people, to be a comedian and tell jokes and have everybody in the room laugh. But he was just awful at it. And this can kind of be true with the INTP as well. You know, we're not very good at, you know, providing emotional support of being that person. We can show love in different ways. However, if you get over your FE inferior, like I talked about earlier, you can start to become more like this ESFJ aspiration that you want to be. But anyway, back to the Joker. People were really mean to him. People were really bringing him down, you know, causing him harm, even sometimes causing him physical harm. Things just kept going downhill for the Joker in this movie. And you could kind of see him changing. You could see him becoming a different person. He becomes more violent, more 
impulsive, doing things that bring harm to other people and possibly himself. He did not seem to make these decisions based on any kind of logical thinking, uh, just his own personal feelings, how he felt about a situation or a person. He began to react to that. So I just kind of thought that was interesting. You know, I, I do think that the Joker kind of portrayed this. They maybe didn't have it in the back of their mind, but that did seem like the case to me. And I'd love to hear from you guys. What do you think? You know, was the Joker about an INTP? Let me know in the comments below. All right, well, that's all I have for today, guys. I want to thank you for watching. If you found the video helpful or entertaining, please leave me a like. That does help with the YouTube algorithm. Uh, also, if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel. I do have many ideas, you know, I wish I could get content out faster, but it does take me some time, so I really hope to get more videos out, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, also, please comment below, you know, do you disagree with me in something in this video? Uh, have you ever felt like you, as an INTP, have slipped into this ISFP superego and started making decisions based on feelings, started, you know, to be more impulsive? Just let me know in the comments. And I'll always appreciate the kind comments saying that these videos do help. I do like seeing those. They help me continue to make videos. So I do appreciate you guys leaving those. So with all that being said, um, thank you guys again for watching and have a great day.